Hello, everyone. Welcome to 10 Minutes Astrology. Once a week, me and Alejo will bring you something to talk about in astrology chat to help you step by step learning astrology. Well, in the, when we were beginning, we are, we are going to make you feel like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you already feel like a pro because you can talk about chat, not only talk about uh, this planet in that side, this planet in that house. We also talk about, we also cover in the lunation personality type. And that more and more, we will introduce you how to put all the chart together. So stay with us. So Alejo, today is a important uh, episode for us, isn't it? <laughs> you just it's a very it. important episode because we're closing the mm -hmm. cycle, the lunation cycle. It's the last. We're entering the last phase of the lunation cycle. So mm -hmm. we said there are eight lunation personality types, mm -hmm. and this is the last one, the balsamic type. Okay, so if you forget or if you have a question about a lunation type, please go back. We have a last a previous seven episode talk about it, and we include what is the lunation type. To be honest, I think me, I agree with Alejo. When Alejo told me he find the lunation, uh, lunation cycle personality type is very important in his part of practice. I agree with him because I adore these type of things. Not, not, not. I didn't really use it to reading all the chart but uh, for me i apply it in the aspect for me like uh, a a winning square is very different from a a a, a waxing square a winning try is very different from a wine you know you know that for me for me the waxing moon and winning moon cycle and combined with aspect are very very important for me but today we are going to the last stage of lunar cycle is the stage is just before the next cycle begins right yeah yes so this is called the balsamic mm -hmm. uh, the balsamic moon mm -hmm. and basically it's just before the new moon so it's mm -hmm. the three days and a half before the new moon mm -hmm. so the the moon is between zero and 45 degrees uh, mm -hmm. distance from the sun but again, she's behind the sun because she's about to reach him. When she when she gets to zero degrees and she reaches him, mm -hmm. we're going to have the new moon. Mm. If you're counting from the sun and you go in the order of the signs, mm -hmm. then you're going to find that she's at 315 degrees, between 315 and 360, of course, which is the whole mm. circle uh, of the sun, yeah, from the sun. But usually, it's I think it's more instinctive because you see it so close that you count... You go. You will go from the sun backwards, so mm. it should be no more than forty-five degrees. If you pass it, if you go more than forty-five degrees, and up to ninety degrees, remember you are in the previous one, which is the last quarter mm -hmm. phase. Mm -hmm. So, so that was very interesting because for a a a non-European language speaker, uh, for me it's like when I hear about why I can understand waxy moon, I can one understand the. The, the the waning moon, full moon, or even but the, but the, there's two two terms for me is most challenges. One is disseminating moon, and another one is balsamic. When I hear about balsamic, I say, why why balsamic? <laughs> and what's the relationship between balsamic moon and the balsamic meaning? Mm. <laughs> balsamic vinegar moon. I'm getting the writing. I'm all about the food. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know why it's called balsamic. Do you know? Yes, I did a little bit of. I checked the dictionary. Okay, they say in the Latin, the balsamic word is uh, is kind of medicine term to make those uh, swarm swarm thing. You know that, that when you when you when you get hurt or when you get cut, mm. you are, you are, you are, your wound is swarm. It is yeah. like a, it's a there's a lump there. Yes. So balsamic describes the things the the the, the, the this, like uh, this this swir swearing is coming down. So from ah, the from the, the, the lump to coming down to disappear. So this is balsamic. The it makes thing. a lot of sense for this movie. Yeah, and there's the there's the feeling of a healing too. I like it. Yes, it's a lot of yeah. sense. Yeah, wow. And also nice. when when every time I heard about balsamic moon, I can still smell the perfume of balsamic meeting. Mm, okay, forgive me. Yeah. <laughs> so, Alejo, could you tell us more about it in the astronomy, uh, in astrology? Astrology. So, so, yeah, what does Bosamic Moon represent in this type of personality? So, we're getting to the end of the cycle, right? 
So one of the things that this moon has to do is with the idea of endings. So when, when you when you end something, you usually need time to reflect, you need time to be alone, to kind of give closure. Mm -hmm. So it is a moon that sometimes is characterized with this need of a space or the need of solitude, perhaps. It's also a moon that is so aware of with the idea of endings, I would say, that it's so aware of, of the idea that nothing lasts forever. So they're mm -hmm. willing to do sacrifices. You know, it's a moon, it has like a, pi a Piscean quality, if you want, like mm -hmm. Pisces. It's a moon that is willing to do sacrifices for others or for or, or to surrender to whatever the occasion requires it. It's this idea that there is a higher process that's sending and this is more important than myself. Mm. Um, I would say that they have this connection with something greater than themselves and they are aware that something is about to start. You know, they are aware that we're, we're ending a cycle and something will mm will begin soon so they might mm. be visionaries you know they have this kind of prophetic inspiration they might be see they might see things that other people don't see because they are very attuned to the to you know when something starts when something happens it's because there were a lot of processes occurring that were invisible behind because mm. this is the closing moon this person are in touch with us in those invisible forces so they might be inspired they might have this kind of prophetic vision they can see um what is about to happen they can mm. they can see it you know of course sometimes this means that they can be very they can be feel confused or overwhelmed because they are mm -hmm. so much in touch with this kind of very liminal elusive uh, aspect of life so sometimes they can be a bit um, confused right mm. but i would mm. say they are kind of you know they have like it's the end of the cycle and the mm. new cycle is about to begin so they have like one foot on each side one foot on the past mm. one foot on the present and they mm. can see what's what are the new tides where where mm. is life taking us to yeah but maybe yeah. they they don't know exactly how to how to how to build but but they have this vision this visionary quality i think yeah i think one thing make the balsamic moon very different between uh balsamic moon type with new moon or with the uh, last quarter moon is that uh, in the last quarter moon, they still strive, they still fight, they still kind of doing something, trying to prevent things uh, to, to go totally lost. But in the new moon, they are totally new period. And they are, they, they are like a, there's no path, there's no, no, no yes. burden. But at this one, there's a lot of things related to burden, but they really, they probably learn that uh, we probably can, the only thing we can do is wait and uh, go with flow rather than i want to do this i want to keep this i want to i want to fight for that no they they, they probably just like uh, to 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 learn to be exist and to be right here right now or or nowhere <laughs> you know you know that is a very interesting very philosophical and a very mysterious period of the month i think maybe we should introduce today's case uh, case study because first it will help us to to understand what is balsamic moon second we have dedicated this this whole seven eight episode to him thanks of him we can talk about lunar phase in this kind of a very psychological or humanistic way i think he i maybe i want to call him the father of a, a humanistic astrology then rudia i think if you uh learn a little bit more about the psychological astrology or waste more than western astrology you may be heard about his name here we are the root yeah was uh, uh born in 1895 and he i think he he is french american i think he and he yeah, was born he, in france he moved to america yeah he eventually moved to america yes and then and then but uh, the, the things he bring to us is so rich he is the the i think point I think coexist with uh, uh, Jung and uh, Freud at that time, but maybe a little bit later. And then he he have absorbed those uh, psychological view and put it into the modern astrology view. But he call it, you know, it's more like uh, the um, humanistic view. Alejo, could you should we should we maybe should we talk about him or should we talk about Charles? Well, I, I there's really something know. about that already mentioning that you already yeah. something very symbolic for the balsamic moon which is when he moved to the States, he changed his name. Ah. 
he changed his identity completely and he stopped all um, all links to his family of origin because he wanted to create this new identity. Ah. So I think there is this kind of balsamic thing of having this vision and mm -hmm. trying to make it real, you know, and mm. this idea of sacrificing. So he sacrificed his 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 links to France, his links to his family, mm -hmm. uh, in order to build this new identity. Mm. I would change astrology forever because astrology changed forever after him. I think so. I think I have to say, if I I he is kind of my idol. I mean, there are so many great astrologers. He's one of them, especially I think because we talk about for last eight week we talking about the lunar phase type of personality, and one of his great work is reinterpret this lunar phase, lunar phase oh. in the modern psychological and the humanistic view. Because he was obsessed with cycles. Mm. That's why he came up with this idea of the lunar phase. He would use cycles when he was interpreting a chart, even if the planets were not in aspect. He would, well, or at least in theory, by what we read in these books. I just, I happen to have just being learning a lot about them radiar because uh, i was attending some lectures about it so that's why i know all this. Uh, so um he 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 was in he was he wanted to reshape astrology he had this vision which is proper mm -hmm. of the balsamic moon mm -hmm. and he, he had the will to sacrifice his own uh, personal life you know to in order to follow this to make this vision real he could see there was a new astrology rising and he wanted to defend that and mm. his astrology was humanistically approached, of course, yes, mm. defending the, the person over the chart. Mm. And it was focused on cycles, not only the lunation cycle, but any cycle. So he yeah. used the lunation cycle as the example of how mm. all of the cycles work. Yeah. And, yeah. and this is the balsamic nature, you know, of prophecy. He could see that astrology was changing. Mm. You know, Liz Green is who she is because it was Dame Radia before her. I have to say yes. And that is amazing. So should we dive into the chart? Because um, I think we can very clearly see this is the last uh, couple of days before the new moon, before the next new moon happened. He has the sun at two degree uh, every Sorry, I think Alejo would be usually, he was born for people who couldn't see the chart. Uh, he was born in 23rd March, 1895, 1 a.m., from Paris and uh, so he has a sun in two degree Aries and the moon in 24 degree Aquarius yes so, so Alejo yeah see, uh, two degrees of Aries means that at 17 degrees of Aquarius we're starting the balsamic phase and the moon is at 24 degrees of Aquarius mm -hmm. so we know that this is the balsamic phase mm -hmm. Uh, and okay, so we have, it, well, it doesn't look so much like endings because it's still very active energy, to be honest, like the moon in Aquarius and the sun yes. and are very pioneer, independent uh, energies. But combined, these two energies combined may have this sense of visionary, you know, the, the moon in Aquarius that needs to feel different and needs to have space to create and needs to have space to to be free and and may have this quality of connecting with something greater than the individual with mm -hmm. with Aquarius there. This idea that there are ideas that go beyond the, my personal needs, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's accused of being detached and these kind of things because they're so connected with their ideology to follow their ideology, yeah. their ideals. And, and the sun in Aries is this kind of drive, right, to do them. So if we ha if we if we merge these two ideas of kind of action and change with the idea of the balsamic moon, we have the idea of a prophet who could mm. so see something that no one else could see, and yeah. who was trying to to you know I think he was when you read his text he's super self confident. Okay, well, I don't know how he was in real life. Of course, I didn't meet him, but in yeah. his book he he sounded like he knew he was building the new astrology. He mm. knew he was building a new astrology. He believed in it entirely. He was a prophet of mm -hmm. sense of astrology. Yeah, I think I, I mean I mean it's not so if we don't talk about this balsamic, there's all a part of the chart that's really showing all these type of things. But uh, um, if we stick with the balsamic, this uh, this uh, last uh, last phase about uh, 
about each other from the sunny areas. And uh, I 100% agree with Alejo. This is something like if we talk about moon in Aquarius or sunny areas, are we talking about the, the last things and the letting go or sacrifice? But I think it could be appear in another way. And uh, I think this chart has a very interesting point is there's uh, the Neptune on the angle. Yes. And uh, that is really e echoing these uh, last, um, last uh, what do we call that, balsamic, balsamic moons uh, feeling about, uh, you know, uh, everything that have, have let go of old things and they have to welcome the new coming things. Yeah, and I think also the Sagittarius rising, the visionary. Mm -hmm. It's a combination because balsamic, I think, is this idea of closing a cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the idea of a bridge between the past and the future, right? Yeah. yeah. What's coming? We're closing this cycle because we can see what's coming. Mm. Yes. I, I mean, I mean, talk. We can talk about Dan Rudia and his chart for longer because when you notice yes, because... that, that you, when you notice that that angular. Neptune, Mars, Pluto, you just like, oh my God, I, 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 I just remember more about his story and that is like, a, you can continue. If you don't know about the Dan Rudia, go to search and see, very interesting, he is also a musician. He is also a musician. So, you know, either that is a lot of story in, I mean, I mean, um, I mean, uh, and he totally also, like you say, changed the astrology today, to be honest. I think uh, uh, he and the young we, would be the, you know, to what should I say? To to important foundation about the so-called modern astrology. Maybe you want to call it what evolutionary astrology, psychological, or archetypal. To be honest, he would be the one laying the modern it all foundation. Comes from there. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, it is very interesting, Alejo, because I mean, I mean, and I'm so happy we use this chart to, to dedicate all this, you know, all this part of the lunation type personalities to him. I think he he has really, really have a lot of things to do with, with modern astrology. Thank you, Alejo. And so, well, I mean, um, we finish our lunation type personality. We are going to step into new era <laughs> no new we're going yes. to some new topic so Alea, what are we going to talk about next week so next week we're going to do the hemisphere balance so we're going to start looking at how to work with the balances in a chart about mm. based on the hemispheres of the chart mm -hmm. yeah balance in the chart that is a very important theme so usually when we learn that we are we have to consider every corner of the chart and by the way beginning with the very simple one and then trust me they are foundation and they can help you to understand the chart potential okay thanks everyone for watching and listen 10 minutes astrology once a week me and alejo will introduce you some basic idea about astrology and how to read the chart like a pro so if you are interested please join us on our facebook group uh, 10 minutes astrology also you can follow alejo on uh, alejo's uh, um, instagram is a uh, liminal cosmos yes very good yeah i remember now <laughs> liminal cosmos <laughs> And also, uh, you can join me on my Instagram, A-O-A-U-K-R-O-D. Also, let me remind you, also, the early bird prize is gone, but we still, from the 1st of the 3rd of December, is our first online conference, and there are so many topics suitable for the beginner. Please share and join us. Okay, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.